Welcome to Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem. In this video, I will show you how to access Copernicus Land Monitoring Services data in Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem. You will find a collection of links in the description below, which will enable you to go through this demonstration hands-on. This is quite the same as the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service demo I presented at Big Data from Space conference last week, so most of the examples will be from Big Data Latvia. Copernicus Land Monitoring Service datasets are a set of information generated from satellite imagery, but not the images themselves, but actually analyzes ready biophysical data and land cover products. These datasets aim to support evidence-based decisions, also for those who are not immediately familiar with satellite image analysis themselves. We will be exploring most of the datasets in Copernicus browser, but first let me show you the, the documentation. So in our documentation portal, under data and information, Copernicus services, Copernicus land monitoring service, you will find a complete description of all the data sets and how to access them and um, the best and settings that you need to use them. If you want an uh, easier to read overview of the data sets and their use cases, we have a blog post called Straight to the Point with Copernicus Land Monitoring Service Data, also available from our main page. This provides a quick overview and a quick description of the individual data products. But let's get exploring. Here is Copernicus Browser, browser.dataspace.copernicus.eu. This is the satellite image viewer of Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem, which also allows you to look at Sentinel data but in this browser, we will now be exploring Copernicus Land Monitoring Service. You can access Copernicus Land Monitoring Service datasets by clicking on Data Collections, Copernicus Land Monitoring Service. And then here you can select between CLMS Land Cover and Land Use Mapping and CLMS Biogeophysical Parameters. Land Cover and Land Use Mapping includes land cover, but also tree cover density. And biogeophysical parameters include soil moisture, snow, temperature, and reflectance, vegetation, and water bodies. Let's first explore land cover. This is the 100 meter discrete land cover classification across the globe. This can also be explored in a 3D global view in Copernicus browser. In addition to the individual classification layers in 22 different classes, this data set also has the fractional cover of each individual data class from 0 to 1, available as a separate layer. Soil moisture is available in the form of soil water index. Soil water index is generated from passive uh, radar measurement and Sentinel-1 imagery. In addition to just viewing the data, it's also possible to directly create a, an area of interest and explore a time series. Here we are in the La Rioja wine region of Spain. If I add a polygon of interest, for this polygon, it is possible to generate a time series, even of the last year, showing how soil moisture conditions changed during the year. This data set can also be exported to the CSV for numerical analysis. Snow cover data is also available in uh, daily cadence, and this can be compared to Sentinel-2 satellite imagery to show you the current actual state of snow cover. Let's load one of the latest images. from 28 September 2025. If we also add this image to the compare, you will see how snow cover has changed from spring to autumn during this period. In the next step, let's explore land surface temperature. Land surface temperature is also available with several different datasets, but probably the most interesting one is the 5 km hourly land surface temperature dataset. Now, if you just load the latest image or an image from a specific date, it will load the image from midnight since that's the latest image 
That's the one closest to your actual investigation date. The way we handle this is to create the time range. So in this case, looking at the 21st of July, which was a heat wave day in uh, Latvia and Estonia, we can actually specify the hour and minute time of the acquisition. We are interested in the acquisition, which, which happened between 12 and 1359 during the 21st of July. So by setting these time intervals, it's possible to actually identify a layer that corresponds to the time that you're interested in. It's also possible to apply a custom eval script, just like any other dataset visualized in Copernicus browser. Right now, the dataset is in Kelvin. If we just open up this window, we click custom script, then here we can actually edit the code that's used for, for visualization. Script for Copernicus Line Monitoring Services are available in the EU CDFE Sentinel Hub Custom Script Repository in the CLMS folder. So this folder is organized with the same structure as the datasets in Copernicus Browser themselves. And here you can actually find about scripts also for land surface temperature. This is a little custom script which um, converts the original Kelvin value to Celsius and applies a different color bar. If I just copy this and apply it to this window, then now I will have the temperature in Celsius. It is even possible to it is even possible to calculate a histogram of this data set. Moving on to vegetation information, this is a land surface phenology annual productivity image of Australia. This data set is calculated by taking all the Sentinel-3 NDVI images of a year, fitting a spline in the TimeSat software, and then calculating various indices of this time series, just the amplitude, the minimum, the maximum, the speed of green up and green down, and in this case, the total annual productivity. Total annual productivity also helps us understand global biome patterns. In this case, we can see how the eastern part of Australia receives much more rain and therefore has much more vegetation productivity on this side of the mountain, while most of central Australia has close to zero productivity. It is a desert. This is a water quality image from East Sumia in the Netherlands. It shows the mean chlorophyll concentration. It is generated every 10 days. And so we can use this to create a time series to check how the water quality has changed throughout the course of the year. For one year between September 2024 and September 2025, we can look at the annual cycle. We can see how the water quality conditions gradually improve throughout the autumn winter season. Of course, clouds will interfere with the imagery. And then as the water gets warmer again, the algae start to bloom during the next summer. This time-lapse can also be downloaded separately as an animated GIF. Now, if you want to move outside Copernicus browser, it is also possible to share CLMS datasets in the form of an OGC service. Let me show you how this works. On the CDSC main page, Under Analysis, you will find Sentinel Hub. This is your Sentinel Hub dashboard, and this includes a configuration utility. And in this configuration utility, you can create a new configuration. In this case, just don't select uh, a configuration to base it on. 
And then once you have a configuration, you can add the layer. And if you want to add the layer, which is from Copernicus Land Monitoring Service, then you have to select the source as bring your own cog. In this case, with bring your own cog, you will need a collection ID. And this collection ID can be taken from the documentation. Under APIs, Sentinel Hub, Data, you have to select CLMS. And then here again, you have the structure of biogeophysical parameters and land use and land cover mapping. This time we are interested in land use and land cover mapping. So I select global dynamic land cover. And for the 100 meter global land cover dataset, this is the collection ID I need. So this is where I paste the collection ID. And I also have to specify the data processing. So for this, again, I have to go back to the script repository. CLMS, dynamic land cover, land cover 100 meter yearly, scripts, discrete classification. This is the script I will be using, so I copy all of it. And I put it in here, the custom script editor window of the configuration wizard. Now that we have a layer, it's also possible to create a preview. And once we have this configuration, we can share it as a WMS or WMTS or WFS or WCF. This is the way it's possible to create an OGC service using the configuration utility. Now I will show you how to create an API request using the request builder. Again, this is more than an OGC request. Here you can actually create code that returns you an image or a histogram based on the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service dataset. So if you are in Request Builder, the first thing to do is to log in. Then we move to Statistical API, and we add our area of interest. We click Parse. This is taking us to Riga in Latvia. Now we have to select the dataset. Again, it is going to be a Bring Your Own Cog dataset. So we need to take the collection ID. This time we want land surface temperature. So Again, from the documentation, Sentinel Hub, API, Dataset, CLMS, we take the collection ID for CLMS land surface temperature. This is the collection ID. The collection type then is Bjork. Now we need an EVA script. Again, we go to the script repository, EU CDSC notebook samples. Now we need an EVA script. So we go again to the script repository. We can copy the code again. And we paste it here in the script layer. Now, since we don't want the visualization, we actually want the quantitative output of the temperature analysis. We have to adjust the script a bit. We delete the default output, which is the one we use for visualization. We also delete the visualizer process related to this layer. We delete the default output also from the return parameter of the evaluate pixel function. And we delete the color bar. So now we have a script. Which calculates the scale factor and an offset to use Celsius data and the outputs are index, EO browser stats, and data mask. 
they are calculated with this simple operation. In the next step, we want to add a histogram to the dataset. Let's specify 10 bins. And now in Request Builder, we actually have the code for the request, which we can also use for building our own code. Now we send the request and wait for the result. See, the result is a histogram. It's also possible to directly download the response as a JSON file, and we can switch between individual dates. We can switch between individual dates to explore the histogram during the previous dates of the time frame we investigated. So this is how you actually perform an API request using Sentinel Hub Request Builder and Copernicus Land Monitoring Service datasets. In the final step, I will show you how to access Copernicus Land Monitoring Services data in Jupyter. We will be using the BID2025 Multitemporal Analysis ELMS Data Notebook from the EU CDSC Notebook Samples Sentinel Hub Repository. So if you open this in Jupyter Land, there are some lines you have to uncomment. Here we want to import getpass in the first cell. Then we uncomment the lines to handle the credentials and create a configuration in the second cell. Here we will have to input our client ID and client secret. If you don't know how to do this, then check the introductory notebooks and the introduction to Sentinel Hub API's webinar. First, we load the geometry um, we downloaded from the web for the boundaries of Latvia. Then we define an about script. We are going to uh, explore net primary productivity. This is the boundary of Latvia now visualized in contextually. We define this about script as a, as a parameter NPP about script. Then we build a process API request to collect the data from the data collection. And again, here it's used as defined BIOC. And the BIOC ID we got from the documentation, this is the BIOC ID for the net primary productivity data set. We specify a time interval, resolution, and the configuration. Now let's run this request. We'll visualize the results. If we do this in the form of a for loop, If we do this in the form of a for loop or a series of time windows, then we are going to get a sequence of return images, which we can visualize side by side. Now you can see the time series sequence for net primary productivity across Latvia visualized from a series of API requests, a processed API request and CLMS data. So to sum up, you can access Copernicus Land Monitoring Service data in various ways. You can visualize it directly in Copernicus Browser. You can also look at time series or generate a time-lapse image directly in Copernicus Browser. You can generate a configuration in the configuration with wizard and create an OGC service, which provides the data to an external visualizer engine or desktop GIS. You can also create an API request using a point-and-click interface in Request Builder, or you can work directly in code in Jupyter Lab. Thank you for watching. I hope you have success building solutions and generating insights from Copernicus Land Monitoring Service.